Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Traveling Your Way Through Happiness. Today, we travel to the country of Denmark to discuss a very popular way of life, one that many of you have heard of due to its popularity in recent years. That concept is huga. Huga is a Danish word that loosely translates to coziness or comfort, but it means a lot more than that. It ties in ideas of companionship, wholesomeness, and contentment, all wrapped up into one harmonious whole. Mike Viking, author of The Little Book of Huga, Danish Secrets to Happy Living, goes on to say, Huga is about an atmosphere and an experience, rather than about things. It is about being with the people we love, a feeling of home, a feeling that we are safe, that we are shielded from the world and allow ourselves to let our guard down. This concept helps you appreciate the things that matter most in life and focuses less on everyday items like electronics. Huga also means creating a warm atmosphere and enjoying the good things in life with good people. This Danish word has no exact equivalent in the English language, but most people have experienced huga at some point in their life. The word huga comes from an old Norse word, hugga, which means to comfort or console. This is also the source of the English word hug, and that connection echoes in the way huga is used today. In Denmark, huga is more than just a word. It's a central part of the culture. Viking, who is also the CEO of the Happiness Research Institute in Copenhagen, says in the Little Book of Huga that the idea of Huga is as fundamental to Danes as freedom is to Americans. He also argues that this is one of the reasons happiness economists rate Denmark as the happiest country in the world, in spite of a wet, chilly climate where it rains for nearly half the year. Examples of anti huga activities include clubbing, eating out, and shopping. All of these things have something else in common. They're expensive. The great thing about the huga trend is that it's incredibly easy to embrace on a budget. Huga activities tend to be cheap or even free. That's what makes this lifestyle a perfect choice for living the good life on a tight budget. At its heart, huga isn't about material things. Instead, it's about a particular feeling or mood. Most of the things that are central to the huga lifestyle, such as candles, home-cooked meals, and intimate gatherings of friends, cost little or nothing. Incorporating huga into your own life can be both simple and easy. You can start as small as lighting candles, wearing comfy clothes, and of course reading a book. Reading is a huga activity because it's a way to slow down and detach yourself from the busy, fast-paced modern world. Comment below some other ways you can incorporate huga into your life. The nice thing about the huga lifestyle is that, in theory, it's open to anyone. Because most huga activities cost so little, no one needs to be barred from trying them on account of money. However, for many Americans, a much bigger problem is time. The U.S. is a very fast-paced society where everyone seems to be busy all the time. But this hectic lifestyle is exactly what makes huga so useful for us. It forces us to slow down and relax, something that doesn't come naturally to many of us. Available to check out today at Euless Public Library are the books The Little Book of Huga, Danish Secrets to Happy Living by Mike Viking, and Huga, Comfort and Food for the Soul by Cook Nation. Both of these books go into further detail about this wonderful Danish lifestyle. Thanks for traveling with me this week. See you next time.